So I just spent the past week building little organizational constructs for our Betrayal at the House on the Hill game. This game has a lot of different pieces, and a while ago, when we were playing it pretty frequently, I found it tedious to have to sort through the different tokens and such every single time we played. We had developed a small system where we sort of put all the most frequently used pieces, like the dice, the players, the room effect markers in one section, and the pieces that might get used during the haunt, like the knowledge rolls and such in a second section, and the most rarely used pieces, like specialized monsters, in a third section. And the common monster tokens themselves were placed back into their cardboard cutout board every time, even though that wasn't a perfect solution because sometimes they would just fall out. Over the past week, I used just some cardboard and a hot glue gun to put together little organizers for the pieces, so we don't have to sort through them every game. I've got a divider for the card decks, and the dice go under that. Under the character stat cards, we've got monster tokens, separated by color and in number order. Over here are the roll tokens, item tokens, room effect markers, specialist monsters, and the character stat card markers. Working with cardboard like this is something I learned to do in a sculpture class at college. We had to build cardboard constructs with precise measurements and clean seams. Now I'll admit, I was never the best at clean builds. You can probably tell by my little token separators. They're pretty messy. Um, but what I can do is tell you about what that professor taught us about how to work with cardboard. First of all, tips and tricks to help with final quality. These are some common sense things that a lot of people let slide, including me when I get lazy. Uh, a sharp blade give you an easy, clean cut so you're not catching the material all the time and causing rips and drags. Uh, use a metal ruler to cut against because if you're using a soft ruler like a wood or plastic, you'll start shaving slivers off the ruler and end up with an uneven ruler and thus uneven lines. Uh, sharp pencils for your measurement marks and here's how she taught us to measure accurately. First of all, some rulers, the measuring lines don't start a little bit from the edge, like this one. Some of them, they just start right at the end of the ruler and then they go in. Never try to use the end of the ruler as your starting point because it's hard to place it right. Instead, go in a bit, like one inch, for example, and adjust your count accordingly. So this would be one inch instead of two inches. Next, and this seemed so obvious once she pointed it out, but I had somehow never thought about it before. Your marks aren't going to be perfectly straight. The way to combat this is to make three marks, so you'll be able to find the point of origin. All right, now the seams. Standard corrugated cardboard is an eighth of an inch thick. Sometimes you'll be working with different kinds of cardboard, like I used some thinner sixteenth of an inch thick cardboard for some of the walls in my dividers. Either way, it's important to know how thick your cardboard is, and from there you can adjust measurements accordingly. So, say I'm using this eighth of an inch thick piece of cardboard. When I measure my piece, I'm not going to cut it at the length I want it, like X inches. I'm going to add an eighth of an inch to the space on either side, so it'll be X and one fourth inches in total. What I'm going to do with my eighth of an inch margin is I'm not going to cut all the way through and cut it off. Instead, I'm going to lightly go over with the blade a few times, so I cut through the top layer and the corrugation, but I don't cut all the way through the bottom. Then, you can peel away the top part of the cardboard, and you're left with this eighth of an inch extra. Depending on what you're doing now, you can either use this to seal off the piece and make a nice clean edge by scoring and folding it over to cover the ragged seam, like so, or you can use this lip to place a second piece of cardboard perpendicular in the created space. So these will go together very cleanly here at the edge instead of just, you know, trying to glue something edge to edge, which is going to make an ugly seam. And making this slot for the pieces can also help to keep them less crooked than just trying to glue the piece straight on its end. And that is how you can use a common, easily obtained, and inexpensive material, like cardboard, to put together all sorts of creations and board game piece organizers. I just scavenged my cardboard from some old boxes. I like to use hot glue because it dries quickly and it holds well, but 
you can still peel off sloppy overflow that squeezes out while it's still wet. Um, you can use other glues if you want to, I think. Just, you know, make sure they're strong enough to actually hold and you give them enough time to dry while they're in place. Uh, you can use this method to make all sorts of handy things. The tile holder shelves like they have in Scrabble or dividers in any custom shape and size. Three foot high platforms that can hold your weight. That's, uh, that's another project we had to do in class. The possibilities are endless. If you do use this method to create something out of cardboard, or if you have your own methods for storing numerous board game pieces, I'd love to see them or hear about them. Please share your ideas or pictures, and happy creating! See you next time!